What's up, everybody? Today we are going to go over a live mobility class. Uh, I'm going to teach you the morning cars routine on the ground, and then I am going to go over some foot and knee stuff. And then we'll get into the hips and hamstrings, and we might touch a little of the shoulders. So let's go ahead and start with the morning cars routine, which is uh, which stands for controlled articular rotations, taking each joint through its full range of motion. When we take the joint through its full range of motion, we want to make sure that we are irradiating about 30%. What that means is we're going to recruit muscles from in and around those surrounding tissues, and we're going to irradiate, which means that we're going to squeeze, we're going to tense, and we're going to contract our muscles as we perform the articulation. So the joint that's being moved, uh, we don't want at 100% irradiation or it won't move. So it shouldn't be uh, irradiating as much as the body is actually irradiating. So the body, except the joint, will be doing the irradiating. The joint will be doing the moving, okay? All right, so we're going to start with the head and neck. I'm going to go to the kneeling position. If you are seated, you can sit down like this and do it. Or if you're kneeling or standing, it'll look just like this. If you're standing, feet are underneath the knees, knees are underneath the hips. Go wider stance if you'd like. You can also go to collapsed kneeling if you uh, feel safe uh, doing that with your knees. I'm going to do that in the collapsed kneeling version. I'm going to first flex or squeeze my fist. I like to put my thumbs inside my fingers. And then from here, I'm going to stand up nice and tall, whether I'm seated or kneeling. I'm going to squeeze or radiate the body, take an inhale. Lower the diaphragm, squeeze and keep the diaphragm low. Shallow breathe and bring the chin down. Rotate the chin to the shoulder. Look over the shoulder. Look back and around, extend the neck. Keep the body irradiated, only move the neck. Try not to move the shoulders, look all the way up. Look over the other shoulder. Rotate, bend, drop the ear into that shoulder, and then from here, we're going to scrape the chin across the chest. One more rotation. Rotate, ear drops the shoulder, extend the neck, bend and rotate toward the other side, and drop the chin down. Two rotations the other way. Chin down, rotate, drop the ear to the shoulder, extend the head and neck back. Rotate, look over the other shoulder, drop the chin down, keep rotating, one more, rotate, bend, extend back, rotate toward the other side, chin down, and flex all the way down. All right, from here, let's move to the thoracic spine. Whether you're seated in a chair, you can go like this, or if you're standing, it'll look just like this, or if you're kneeling, which I will do, it'll look just like this. Okay, from here, what I'm gonna do is actually tuck my toes, or extend my toes and sit on my heels in dorsiflexion of the ankle. From here, I'm gonna keep my chin locked here. I'm not gonna move my head. The only thing I'm gonna move is my thoracic spine. A lot of people um, tend to use their hips or their shoulders here um, to move the thoracic spine. So what you wanna do is Try to keep everything tight, and as you move the spine, make sure nothing else is moving. So notice that my arms weren't moving, my head wasn't moving, only trying to move the thoracic spine. So give yourself a hug, hands on top of the shoulders. From here, just the upper back is going to flex down. Then we're going to rotate just the upper back, drop the shoulder down, extend back. Use the upper back here and lower back. Rotate, bend into the side, flex all the way down. Keep rotating, keep rotating, bend into the side, extend back, rotate toward the other side, bend into that side, and flex forward and rotate toward the other direction. This time we're going to go the other way, bend into the side. Extend back, rotate, bend into that side, 
and flex all the way down. Keep rotating, keep rotating. Then extend back, rotate to the other direction, bend into that side, and flex down. <clears throat> all right, for the shoulder, what we're gonna do is go into flexion, whether you're standing or kneeling or seated, just bring your arm all the way overhead. You could also do this in the half kneeling position as well. So just choose whatever option works best for you. From here, I'm going to go into shoulder flexion. Other hand and fist is still squeezing. Everything's irradiating. Every, every time we go through a circle, we want our whole body tense, except for that joint that's being moved. From here, we're going to internally rotate as we reach back. Try not to open up the chest. Keep internally rotating the shoulder so that the back of the hand moves in a direction so it faces the side of the body at the end there. And then we're going to extend the shoulder, externally rotate, reach back all the way up across the body and down. One more just like that. Flexion, internal rotation, all the way to extension, and then extension, external rotation all the way to flexion. All right, we'll do that on the other side. Flexion. Internal rotation all the way to extension. Back of the hand next to the side. Extension. External rotation. Unwind all the way up across the body and down. You're trying to make the biggest circle you can without using your scapula or your T-spine or your neck. And then extend, unwind, reach back, up, across the body, and down. From here, elbows. We'll tee the elbows out here. Squeeze the fists. Whether we're standing or kneeling, we can do this while we're in any position here. So we're going to bend the elbows. And then we're going to turn the palms out and then extend the elbows. Supinate, flex, pronate, extend. Now we're gonna flex, supinate, extend. Pronate, flex, supinate, extend. And then from here, elbows at a 90 degree angle, standing or sitting, whatever works best for you. And then we're gonna extend the wrists, Look straight ahead, chin in line with sternum. Really doesn't matter what the rest of the body is doing as long as we're not moving our elbows or uh, staying still. So extend the hands. We're going to go to ulnar uh, deviation first. So the pinkies will go inward. We'll draw a circle. And we're going to move our fingers and hand and wrist into flexion. Sorry, not the fingers, just the wrist. Trying to get that elbow at a 90 degree angle, those hands all the way up here. From here, we'll go out. So this will be a radial deviation all the way to wrist extension. Then in, up, out, all the way down. Now we're going to do two rotations the other way. Out. All the way up, all the way in, all the way down. Out, all the way up, up, all the way in, in, all the way down. Okay, check that out. If you're kneeling like me, it might be hard on your ankles. If it was hard on your ankles, you can always do this standing, and you can also do this in a chair, so you don't have to do this like this. All right, the next position we're going to get into is the sideline hip car. I'm going to use a tennis ball. If you don't have a tennis ball, you can use a rag or a towel or a shirt, and we're going to bring that tennis ball behind the knee and stack my knees together. We place the block on the side here for head support. <clears throat> All right, 
We're going to bring that ball behind the knee, get in the fetal position here, and then we're going to go to abduction and then flexion of the hip. From here, squeeze that ball, go to internal hip rotation, draw a big circle all the way around to hip extension, knee to knee. Okay? From here, extension, abduction, all the way to flexion, all the way to the elbow, and down. One more, flexion, abduction, internal rotation, draw a big circle, squeeze the ball. And then extension, abduction, all the way to flexion, up to the elbow, and down. From here, let's switch side. So you don't have to have a block and you don't have to have a tennis ball. It would just look like this. But this is a good head support. So you're not focusing on your neck the entire time because we, all we want to do is focus on our hip. So the less distractions, the better. And then also, bringing this ball behind the knee will keep that knee bent the whole time because a lot of times you'll see people extend their knee. And we want that knee bent because we want that hip to do all of the work and we want that squeezing of the ball to create more radiation to control that hip. And you can also hold on to a kettlebell even more radiation. So if you have one available, we go to flexion, abduction, or you could push into a wall, internal rotation all the way around, and then extension, abduction, all the way up, forward, and let's do one more. Up, internal rotation, keep that ball, squeeze, extension, and then extension, Abduction, all the way to flexion, and drop the ball. All right. For the knee, you can go bring your back against a wall. You can do this sitting in a chair. You're going to bring one arm underneath the thigh and get a good grip with the hands. And then from here, you're going to turn that foot out. And I'm going to turn that foot in. Turn that foot out. And then turn that foot in, out, and then I'm going to extend the knee, and then turn in, and then bend the knee. So as we turn out, we want just the tibia to be moving here. Not, we don't want just the foot. We want the tibia and foot moving as one unit. Okay. The reason why we're securing our leg like this is so that our hip doesn't do the movement for the knee. Okay. Let me fix something real quick. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to grab underneath, get a good squeeze here, externally rotate at the tibia, and then extend. In, bend, out, extend. In, bend, out, extend, and then we'll bend. In, extend. Out, bend, in, extend. Out. Bend, in, extend. Switch side. Same thing. Remember, just the tibia is moving. Try not to move the hip. And try to isolate. Try not to just use your foot here. So we want the whole shin and ankle moving as one unit here. Okay? Out. Extend. In. Bend. Out. Extend, in, bend, and then extend, out, bend. In, extend, out, bend. Okay. Ankle, if you had that same yoga block, you could bring one foot underneath the knee here, and you could perform one foot at a time just like that, or you can just hold on to the shin just like this. So whatever you're using, let's go ahead and plantar flex the foot. We're going to really use all these muscles in the posterior lower limb here, create this plantar flexion, maybe even push into the block, squeeze and irradiate here. 
And then what we're going to do is <clears throat> point down, draw a circle in, all the way up and around, up, out, all the way around. This is the hard part here for me, at least. All the way around the edge of the circle. Don't skip. And down. In. Easy part, I feel like. For me, at least. Up. This is where it gets tricky. Out. All the way around. And down. Down and out. All the way up. Up and in. All the way around. All the way down. Out. All the way around and up. Up. Up and in, in, all the way around. Okay, we're curing this using the block, so I'm isolating the ankle. Remember, you can also do it like this. So I'm going to go ahead and get the other side. So whether you're doing it like this or like this, try to control it in the same way. Plantar flex. Let's go out to start. All the way around. So out. Whether you're at 6 o'clock or 9 o'clock and up, 12 o'clock, then in, all the way around, all the way around the circle and up, all the way around one more time, and down. Let's go the other way two times, in this time immediately, up, out, laterally, and down one more, all the way around. Big circle. Don't miss an edge. It's not square. All right. And then let's move to the patella. So the patella, you want your legs relaxed. It really is best when you have a wall behind you because you're not worrying about supporting yourself using your core. So you can really focus on kind of wedging yourself in and just pushing the kneecap side to side and up and down. Then you're going to push it in a full 360 degree circle. So if the kneecap doesn't move, that's telling you something. If there's pain, that's telling you something. But we're not going to push for pain. We're not going to push as hard as we can either. We're going to just move that patella around in a passive circle. So this is requiring no irradiation for this one. So we're actually not irradiating for this uh, controlled articular rotation. Go ahead and switch side. All you're going to do is just push it around three times one way, three times the other way, and do this periodically throughout the day. You'll notice if there is clicking or if there is pain or lack of movement, those are assessments that you write down and that you, you know, talk to your doctor about. All right. So from here, let's move to the toes. All right. <clears throat> All ten toes will go off the ground first. And we're going to try to separate all 10 toes. From here, we're going to squeeze the toes into the ground. Just kind of claw them into the ground. Squeezing and flexing those toes, just like you're flexing your palms. So use the insides of your feet. And now go ahead and bring all 10 toes off the ground and try to separate each toe. Trying to separate each toe. Then from here, we're going to piano them down from pinky all the way to big toe. And then we're going to hold the big toe up in the air for five, four, three, two. Big toe down, small toes up for five, four, three, two. And then we're going to switch small toes down, big toes up for five, four, Three, really get those big toes up. If you can't get them up actively, use assistance with your hands, tactile assistance. From here, big toe down, small toes up, and hold. Five, four, three, two. And then from here, we're going to tap the big toe down three times. One, two, and three. All right, so that was our toe work. Now we're going to move into some... Intrinsic foot strength. So we're going to go into uh, inversion here, which basically means the medial portion of the foot is opening up. 
Okay, E versions is where everyone can see E, E version, so the foot is going inward, but everyone can see it on the outside. So that would be, I would say E version is when the outside of the foot can see, be seen by everyone. So it helps you remember. Inversion, okay, is when the foot opens up on the inside. So we're at inverted foot position, and what we're going to do is stretch this tissue out for about uh, 30 seconds for this demonstration, and then if you're working on intrinsic foot strength and you want to work on this obviously longer, more inputs over longer periods of time and more effort in this position is going to give you more gains. So just doing this one video uh, for 30 seconds is not going to help you at all. If you do it for 30 seconds every day and you multiply that time in a couple weeks and you do more of this, over months and years, yes, I guarantee you, you'll have results. But just doing this once today won't do anything. But for the example today, uh, intrinsic foot strength, we're in inversion of the foot, and we've been here for about a minute. And then from here, what we're going to do is we're going to try to evert the foot. So we're going to try to push inside tissues into the kettlebell here. If you don't have a kettlebell, you might need to use a ridge or a mat or some type of um, angle that you can get your foot on, okay? Now, for this example, I won't go over it too long, so we'll move on after this if you don't have a kettlebell. From here, we're gonna press into the kettlebell from 0% to 10%, 10 to 20%. I'm gonna start irradiating, pressing into the wall, 30% here. If I feel like I'm losing traction or if I'm losing my inversion, I'll stand up taller, which I think I need to do. Hold here, 30%, 40, 40 to 50, pressing the inside of the foot into the kettle, 50 to 60, 60 to 70, 70 to 80, 80 to 90, and 100% effort. Safe effort though, five, four, three, Two. And now we're going to try to lift away from the kettlebell. So we're going to go deeper in inversion. Hold here. Squeeze everything you can. 100% effort. Five, four, three, two, and one. Okay. Now for a foot eversion, what we would do is just turn around to the same foot. And we would step on the outside of the edge of the kettlebell. So this would be foot eversion. Okay. Now we're going to be working on a different portion of this foot. So now we're going to be stretching this tissue out. Uh, if the kettle doesn't work and you want to put a cloth over it, that could be a possibility. You also might have to use your own wedge system. Okay, so whatever you create might be best for you, but a kettle can be just fine. From here, I am everted, but is an eversion, holding here for 30 seconds to about two minutes. Again, if you want more adaptations, you're gonna to have to do this daily, and you're gonna to have to do this a lot for it to actually have changes. From here, what we're gonna do is, again, stretch in around two minutes, and then PAL's efforts press the outside of the foot into the kettlebell. So I'm gonna begin doing that now. 5%, 10%. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, as much as I can, for five, four, three, two, and I'm going to try to lift away from the kettlebell for five, four, three, and go deeper in inversion, two, and one. Okay, so that would be an example of foot inversion. And eversion, pals and rals, hold that passive stretch two minutes, and then pals zero to 100%, and then rals in around 10 to 15 seconds. So that'd be an example of some foot intrinsic work. As far as for your toes, you have one of these mini bands here. You can wrap it around the big toes. So if you are working on getting those toes to move, not move, but be able to really passively stretch in a um, going medially because what happens if they go laterally is you'll get bunions. So we want to make sure that you have control of that big toe especially and it doesn't go inward. 
that is really important because bunions are a very painful process. Okay, so from here, what we're going to do is bring the big toe up, separate, get a little bit of tension so that those toes have to move immediately and hold here and breathe for five, four, three, two, then switch big toe down, small toes up, five, four, three, two, and then switch big toes up, small toes down, five, four, three, two, and then big toe down, small toes up for five, four, three, two, and switch, 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 and switch. And then you can just kind of play around with that. That will obviously give you a little bit more stimulation and tactile feedback which is uh, important because it's going to increase neural drive or radiation, more force outputs, more communication with the cells, more adaptation. So if you do that daily over periods of time, it will adapt. But if you do that once, it won't do anything at all. All right. So from here, what we're going to do is use, let's see here. These sliders are good if you're ever practicing Movements from 9090, you can actually make a easier version for yourself. Just slide that underneath. Okay, and then you progress to hovering that foot off the ground. So that's a good slider piece of advice if you're working on that back axial. We're going to use these kettles as barriers today. We're going to do some hip flexion and we're going to stretch those hamstrings out a little bit okay so from here we're going to do is set up those kettlebells what you can also use our yoga blocks what we're going to do is we're going to perform some hovers over the kettlebells or yoga blocks so we're going to go ahead and set up in a straddle position place your yoga blocks or kettlebells or you can just use a shirt and you actually don't need anything you can think of it as an imaginary object okay but I'm sure you have a candle or a cup that you could use or a shoe uh, that you could use as a barrier. And all we're going to do is get into a, uh, I guess, not too far out of a straddle. So find a middle distance. So I don't want you to go all the way out as much as you can. I want you to find a very comfortable zone first. So we're just going to practice some quick hovers or lift offs. So from here, I'm going to secure a spot. I'm going to push my hands into the ground behind me. I'm going to sit up nice and tall, and then from here, I'm going to push into the ground and try to lift my leg over the kettlebell. I'm going to squeeze this leg into the ground, and I'm going to take an inhale, radiate, and I'm going to lift off, slowly go over, and then parachute all the way down. And then one more time, inhale, radiate, lift off, over, all the way around and slowly bring it down. Let's go ahead and switch side. Same thing, other side, hands behind the body, push the hands into the ground, inhale, radiate, push that leg down, lift up, all the way over and slowly bring it down. Inhale, radiate, lift up, inhale, all the way up, all the way around and all the way down. Now I'm gonna challenge you by bringing your feet out a little bit wider. And we're gonna bring our hands in front of our body this time. So from here, all right. Let's go ahead and set up, whether you have blocks or shoes or kettles, hands in front. I'm gonna push into the ground. I'm gonna start with this leg, inhale, Radiate, lift off, parachute over. Here we go. Inhale, radiate, lift off. Oof. So you might cramp up in the quad, exactly what I just did. And that's fine because it's just telling you that you need to work on that more. But it's also a good sign because it's neurological confusion and you're actually going to change the tissue doing that over time so now let's go ahead and switch side here and push down 
Oh, wait, we need to come back over the other way. So from here, inhale, up, slowly bring it down. Whew. All right, let's go ahead and switch sides here. Inhale, push into the ground, lift up. Slowly bring it down, and let's go back the other way. Inhale, up, and radiate. And slowly bring it down. Wow. Now we're gonna do it one more time, but we're gonna have our hands clamp together this time, okay? Whether you're doing it with your feet uh, in plantar flexion or dorsiflexion, you can you can do it in the middle. It really doesn't matter as long as you're radiating. I'm going to do it dorsiflexion this time. I'm going to squeeze my fists. Focus on this side. Inhale, radiate, lift up and over. Inhale, radiate, up and over. And we're going to switch. Inhale, radiate, up and over. Inhale, radiate, up and over. All right, so those are some hip flexion, obviously. We're in hip flexion. We're also in knee extension hovers. And whether you're in plantar or dorsiflexion of the ankle, um, you're doing that as well. But what that's going to do is it's going to help to um, give you more hamstring flexibility because in order to have hamstring flexibility and mobility, you need to have also quadricep mobility. So in order to get into those straight knee positions, your knee has to be, or your quad actually has to be able to shorten actively. And so if you can control those active knee positions, and then you'll be able to um, also straighten it out you'll have more range in the hamstring i feel but also it also has to deal with how long your arms are how how flexible your back is so that's one of your goals so now we're going to get into a butterfly position if you have the the kettlebells you can use them to add weight or load and what we're going to do is if you don't have them you're going to drive the elbows into the thighs, just like that. If you do have the kettles, you can hold onto the kettles just like this, or you can place them on the knee just like this. So whatever you would like to do, I'm gonna hold here, kind of hold them off, but put my elbows on. I try to stand up nice and tall. If I wanna make this even more isolated, I can put my back against the wall you don't have a wall you can also use a box if you don't have a box you don't actually need a box or a wall you can just try to do it you just might be feeling it more in the spine from here you breathe try to relax my knees to the ground I'm gonna go ahead and switch here and then I'm going to start pressing the elbows into the wall and pressing the kettles into the knees. Now, obviously, this is more advanced, so I wouldn't recommend this for someone that's never done this before. Um, and then what I'm going to do is, if you don't have the kettles or if you're a beginner, I would like you to just use your elbows for the irradiation and the effort. I'm going to use the kettle, so if you have done FRC, and you know what you're doing here. Then from here, what we're going to do is try to adduct and try to internally rotate at the hip. Um, and while we're doing that, we're going to press down and create an isometric effort from 0 to 100%. So we're going to start pressing down, pushing into the kettle, 0%, 2%, 3%. Now, if it hurts or if there's any pain, reduce the load or stop. All the way to 10%. 10 to 15. 15 to 20. 
35 to 40, 45 to 50, trying to open up my legs but pushing down, isometric load, should feel all of the adductors here inside the legs, 30%, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, all the way to your safest and greatest effort, for 5, 4, 3, Two, and then I'll actively try to get those knees into the ground. Actively press those knees into the ground. So squeeze the glutes here. Try to go deeper into abduction and deeper into external rotation of those hips. So try to actively go deeper. So we lift off. Keep pushing those knees down. Five, four, three, two, and then relax. And you can go back to your passive stretch. And from here, what we're going to do is go ahead and straighten those legs out. Shake them out a little bit. And we'll work a little bit of 90-90 before class is over. And hit a little bit of the shoulders. So from here, what we're going to do is, since we worked um, adduction, now we're going to work abduction. So we're going to get into our 90-90, and then we're going to just extend the knee, okay? And then from here, what we're going to do is either, if we have a wall available, you can place yourself against the wall and get more effort, more radiation. I can place these kettles here just to secure myself. I can press them to the wall like that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to push into the wall, push into the ground, push into the leg with my, um, push into the ground with the leg, and then try to lift that leg all the way up as high as I can, okay, and hold it for five seconds. So I'm going to try to get in a position where if I want to cheat, I can lean this way and make it easy. If I want to make it harder, I try to stand up or I try to sit up nice and tall. So I'm going to try to find a happy medium here. Actually, going to use these kettlebells to help me here, or you can use the ground. So from here, I'm going to inhale, radiate, and then lift off. Five, four, three, two, and then slowly bring it down. Let's try that again. Push into the ground. Inhale, radiate, lift off. Five, four, three. Two, and then slowly bring it down. One more. Inhale, push into the ground. Radiate, lift off. Five, four, three, two, and down. Go ahead and bend that back knee back to your 90-90. And let's go ahead and switch side. Right. Set yourself up. Inhale, irradiate, and push. Find a happy medium. So obviously, if you lean, you can go as far up as possible. But if you sit up nice and tall, it's a lot harder. Let's try to find a happy medium. I'm actually, gonna go like this. Okay. So from here, inhale. Radiate and then lift off. Five, four, three, two, and then slowly bring it down. Okay. Two more. Inhale, radiate, lift off. Five, four, three, two, and then slowly bring it down. Last one. Inhale, radiate, lift off. Five, four, three, two, and then slowly bring it down. Good. Woo. All right. <clears throat> now we are going to, lastly, work on some shoulder work. Uh, if you have a tennis ball and yoga block, that would be great. What we're going to do is get in a fetal position. If you don't have that, it'll just look like this. I'm just going to stretch out internal rotators here. 
I'm going to use the ball and I'm going to go into internal rotation. The fist will go toward the buckle line. First, I want to make sure that my scap is set in neutral position and it's out in front of the shoulder to start and then down about 10 degrees. The back of my shoulder should be flat on the ground. And then I'm going to bend the elbow and then I'm going to internally rotate. I should feel a good stretch here. From here, I'm going to hold and breathe. Inhale and exhale. Now we're going to focus on our breathing here. Inhaling for four. Exhaling for eight. Inhale for four. And exhale. Inhale and exhale. And then from here, I'm going to try to go into external rotation of the shoulder. Hand will be locked, create that isometric load. 5%, 10%, 15, 20, 25 to 30, 35 to 40, 45 to 50, 55 to 60, 70 to 80. Hold here, 5, 4, 3, 2, and then go deeper into internal rotation. Try to go deeper, squeeze that ball, hold it, 5, 4, keep going, 3, 2, and then relax. And then you can go external and internal. And switch. So fetal position set up. And then extend the elbow. Bring it down about 10 degrees, bend the elbow. And internally rotate here. Should feel a good stretch. Breathe and hold. Inhale four, exhale eight. Focus on your breathing and finding a good line of tension here. Keep your wrist straight, try not to flex that wrist. Breathe. And then from here, press the back of this hand into the bottom of that palm, 10%, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, hold, 5, 4, 3, 2, and then go deeper into internal rotation, hold it here, Squeeze the ball. If you don't have the ball, that's fine. Squeeze. Push toward the ground. Five, four, three, two, and then back. Keep passive. Now, if you wanted to improve internal rotation, then obviously you need this more than once a day. And for longer holds and higher isometrics and longer cows and rails. So those are things that you talk to an FRC practitioner about. So if you have concerns about any of your joints uh, or any of your body parts that need to have work be done or you have had work be done, um, those are questions that you and a functional range conditioning mobility specialist can talk through and they can coach you through how to fix that particular area so that you don't have to compensate uh, for that area and ruin other body parts. So it's really important that you isolate but also use that bioflow approach where understanding that Tissues are continuous. There are no insertion origination points. Everything flows together. So that's something that is a functional range systems concept that we think about when we are performing our cars. They're not in isolation. They, it, is, uh, it is a bioflow movement, which basically means that your whole body is involved. All right, so that is it for today. I hope you all enjoyed, and we'll see you later. Peace.